Hello everyone and welcome, my name is Marcus and today in this video I'm going to share with you how to build a Photoshop template to export your designs to social media and print and how to update the template with new designs with just a few clicks and automatically export all of your assets in one go. So yeah, excited? Let's get started. So before we start building this template, I'm going to show the template in action. So what I'm going to do is just select this poster here and then I'm going to double click on a smart object and it will ask me to save to open the Illustrator file, and that's okay. And then I'm just gonna drag and drop a new Illu poster here, I'm gonna use the 41, and then I'm just gonna lay it here. Maybe I will create a new layer, and then just lay it there actually, so it's more organized. And just make sure it's aligned. I'm gonna turn that layer off, save it, close it, go back to Photoshop, and here we go. So it updates automatically in every in every asset. So I have Square for LinkedIn and all those Square social media platforms like Twitter and LinkedIn. And then I have Instagram here, Stories, Dribble. My, if I make a tutorial, I already have my uh, thumbnail set up. And if I export this for like a Society6 to sell my posters, I already have this set up as well. Just need to be careful because some of the aspect ratios from like Society6 does not match the aspect ratio of the poster I'm using. So in this case, I will probably need to scale this down and maybe create a little bit of more space. Uh, go back to Illustrator and just change this to have a little bit more design there, <laughs> like that. And as soon as I press save, we just can go back to the folder where it is and all my assets will be automatically saved. As you can see here, they're all ready to go and been posted everywhere. And just to show you how that works, I'm going to just make Ctrl Z. So we go back to all the poster, I'm going to save it again. And all the assets been updated to the older poster we had before. So yeah, this is how the template works. Now I'm going to show you how to build it. To start, let's make a new Photoshop file and let's name it social. Uh, social export. I mean, we can put print as well. I'm just going to leave it simple. And then I'm going to do it the square version first. A thousand by a thousand pixels in RGB, 72 pixels resolution. That's okay. And then press okay. So this will be our first asset. And then we need to go to the artboard tool, make an artboard around this asset here. Make sure the artboard is also 10, 000, a thousand by a thousand. And let's name this artboard to square. Yeah, something like this. And then this is very important step, which you need to name square and then write dot gpg. So this will be the file extension. Can be jpeg or it will be png. It doesn't really matter. png or psd if you want to. So this is when Photoshop saves this automatically, it will, it will use this uh, name as an extension for the file that we will export. GPG and square and then we with the artboard tool selected we're going to click on the plus here and the next one we're going to do is the Instagram one which is a 1080 nope, 1080 by 1350 and we have the square one and then let's change the name here let's name it IG JPEG as well and there is one trick on not the trick a problem on instagram is because this is the post resolution when you are scrolling on your timeline they are like a little bit taller but when you are on your gallery the posters is actually the resolution is actually square it like when you go to a gallery or other people's galleries it's a square version of the post so you need to be careful and just always make like a a little square inside of your um instagram template I'm using the rectangle selection and then make a new layer and fill that rectangle with a black color and then align it to the center and use like these guides to let you know where the square part of the post will be. So when you post your designs, if you go, if you go over these guides here, you actually will be cropped in your gallery, which maybe can work, but if you want it to be really nicely done on your gallery, it's really nice to keep your poster designs under these little guides. So yeah, that's the only thing on, on Instagram that's a little bit annoying. 
And then let's duplicate this one again, holding the plus key. And then let's change this to be a stories version. I'm going to use 1920. And this will be the vertical version for the stories. Let's name this stories. And then do the same thing. JPEG and another one. You do as many as you, you need to because if you only use Instagram, you're only going to need this too. Or if you use LinkedIn and I don't know other social medias like Twitter, you could definitely need the square one. And then I'm going to make a new artboard. Which one did I do for oh, Dribble? I do use Dribble probably more than I use Instagram, so that's important for me. And I'm going to use the resolution of Dribble, which is 1600 by 1200. And name it dribble dot jpeg. And of course, if I'm making a tutorial about the poster I've just designed, I need a thumbnail one as well. So 1920 by 1080. And which ones? Uh, I think that's it. And then the print poster. So this is a tricky one because it's well, it's not tricky. It's just uh, just name this really quick. YouTube jpeg if you if you're going to sell your posters on society 6 for example which is 2400 by 3600 yeah um, if your poster is vector like made in illustrator is no problem you can scale things up as much as you want to with no losing any quality on your poster but if you made for example your poster in Photoshop this will, and you made a, a lower resolution. When you expand your poster to be this entire resolution, it probably will be pixelated a little bit. So if you plan to sell your poster on some so, some online market, you need to be sure you go to their website and see what the resolutions of the products are. And be sure if you are designing in, in Photoshop or like any other pixel um, oriented the software you need to be sure you design it at the max that we need to for example if you're designing for coffee tables be sure to design already with this resolution only if it's like a bitmap software if it's a vector software like illustrator you are okay with it because vectors are easy to scale up and down perfect let's go back to photoshop and let's import our poster here so just going to go back to my finder find a poster that i want to use I'm gonna use the number 41. Oh, this is the one I changed. Let's just find a better poster. Uh, let's gonna find 38, 38. I'm gonna use 38B. So I'm gonna just drag one of my posters to the artboard there. No, this one, this one first. Okay, it needs to be dragged by hand here. And then I'm gonna scale it. So it fits the square version really nicely. I'm going to use the align tools as well, just to align it perfectly to the artboard. And then I'm going to just add a drop shadow, go into effects and then drop shadow just to create a little bit of more production value to this export and just make it like this, maybe a little bit like that. Yeah, work around with your drop shadow, you can even change the colors and yeah. It's not. It's just, it's just a. It's just a drop shadow. So you know what you're doing. I'm sure. And this is done. And the next thing I'm gonna do is create. Um, actually, you can use this one. This is the background color. And we can. We're just gonna make it like a smart object. So when we change this background color, it changes everywhere. So let's right click, and then convert to smart object. And then let's go inside of this smart object and just change the color to something more in the what well, more that we need more cool, cooler <laughs> and then what you do next is we just duplicate these two files and using command or control g j and just drag them to the next artboard and we do this again here we need to align it oops something here and then we align it the, the poster in the artboard here be sure to be uh, under this uh, square part here because this will be the one on your gallery you can even scale it a little bit more if you want to because if you use this template your next poster above this one will also have this uh, margin so it will be a, the double of the margin here so it will be okay if you actually almost 
co very close to the guides there. And then let's do the same thing here. Drag it to the stories. Change the scale of this poster again, just to match the vertical resolution a little bit better. And again for the dribble version. Let me just... Sometimes Photoshop doesn't agree with me. Oh, it's because I have everything selected, actually, so it's not even Photoshop's file fault. And yeah, something like this. And then for my YouTube thumbnail, just gonna drag and drop it there. Please, I don't know why I'm selecting everything. So the, the YouTube thumbnail, I do something which is like I have to do a close-up version of the poster on the left side and then the entire poster design on the right side. But I do need to be sure where is the middle of the artboard, so I normally do a custom guides. So I go to view, guides, and then I make a new guide layout. And I already have it set up, which is two columns and one row, and no margins. So I know exactly where is the middle. Then I'm gonna scale my poster very nicely like this. And then using the guides, I'm gonna go to the selection tool here and make a really nice selection, guide to guide and then make a mask on my design. And then I'm gonna duplicate this one again, drag it to the artboard, and then just put it here in the middle, the best I can. And yeah, this is pretty much how I do all my exports. And last but not least, the you not the YouTube, I need to rename this one, it needs to be poster poster, it'll be alright, and jpeg. Okay, oh, I need to save that too. Also, just gonna scale this up. Be again, because this is a vector, it's okay for me to scale it as much as I want. Not gonna lose any resolution, but if you are using a bitmap software, you need to be sure you design, you start this your design with the max resolution that you need. It's very important. Otherwise, if you scale this like a JPEG and you scale it 300%, it's gonna be so pixelated. And you're gonna be like, oh. And if someone buys your poster, you'll be like very disappointed because there's like a pixel art poster. Anyway, this is done. And then the next thing we need to do is save our file. Let's go save us. And I'm just gonna save it social exports to. And this next part is the magical part. So we have all of our files with different extension and names. And the next thing we need to do is just go to file and then generate image assets. Just this. And then if you press save again, Photoshop will generate all of these assets for you and put them on a folder with the same name of, as your file. And as you can see here, all of your files are here and ready to be sent to your phone and to your social media platforms and to your followers. And yeah. That's pretty much it. I hope I explained myself well how to do this. And yeah, be sure to try it. Be sure to do it. It saves you so much time in the longer run because you just update one file here. You just drag a new poster. Let's find a new poster. Um, I didn't even post this tutorial yet, but imagine this one. Just drag the Photoshop in, saved it, go back to Photoshop. Wait for it to update. It's all here. I don't like the background color. Go inside. Change the background color to something lighter. Save it. Go back to the file. Updates everywhere. Save it. Go back to your folder. And it's all updated and ready to be uploaded and exported and sell on online marketplaces pretty nice and by the way this is the next tutorial that's coming friday i think so be sure to to subscribe and check this tutorial i'm pretty sure you're gonna love it so yeah thank you so much for being here today i'm so happy you took your time to watch this video and yeah i see you in the next one have a good one cheers bye bye